Milwaukee, Wisconsin. What do we know about Milwaukee? Beer? More beer? Cheese? Yeah, stereotypes. Let's uh let's look into old world Milwaukee. I think you'll find there's much more there than what we've been told. This video will not be a history lesson. This is not a PBS channel or a National Geographic. Uh, on this channel we like to look into the historical narrative and recognize it for the deception that it is. Uh, and we'll be taking a good look here at Milwaukee, Wisconsin in what I suggest was a major metropolis of the old world. Uh, this would be a bird's eye view from 1872 a time when the population of Milwaukee was said to be around 70,000 people. A very early time period in our historical narrative, Industrial Revolution and all of the cover stories, um, explanations for the way things are today. Um, as you can see, even in 1872, making very little sense according to this bird's eye view drawing, the amount of uh, development that had already taken place up to that time period. Amount of bridges, amount of multi-story buildings, many built of brick and stone. Uh, in this video we're going to be looking at many of the structures that once existed in Milwaukee. And many of these structures of course still stand, but many have uh, not stood the test of time and uh, were torn down before their expiry date, I would suggest. We're looking at a 1912 photograph here the uh, auditorium, I believe, in the background. Let's take a look on the interior of the auditorium. So, uh, as we look into this field of research, we recognize the level of precision and uh, skill that would have gone into building a lot of these structures, uh, and so many of them we don't have a given time frame or an allowance for how these were. Um, constructed. They just sort of pop up on the scene. Here we have a multi-story bank. Very early time period. Uh, this is also very interesting about Milwaukee. Several breweries of this size. This would be the Val Blatt's Brewing Company. I just recognize the um, enormity of the structure here. and Try to wrap your head around why anyone would build um, such a structure to house a brewery. Here's a modern day photograph of a part of that brewery. So if we look at this chunk here, I jump back to here, what we're looking at is this this bit here. Obviously the towers have been removed because that's that's uh, run of the mill practice um, when we're racing the old world is to get rid of a lot of the tech that was um, existing on, on the tops of these things. And this is all that's left of that area today. Here we have a look at the Pabst Brewery, also a massive structure, um, have featured that in other videos, but it's certainly worth um, a spotlight just to give you a sense of um, the enormity of, of the uh, complex and then the massive stacks. Look how, look how large this is. You can see how many stories these are and this one just shoots right off into the sky. Another, another look at a corner of the Pabst Brewery. Now you get a real sense for um, the castle-like look. These were not shacks, these were not boards, not made, made of uh, board and batten or any of that kind of stuff. That could easily burn. These are all um, brick and often stone in the lower sections. It's a very, very uh, um, rugged, sturdy buildings and smacks of the old world too. And then Milwaukee is known for um, having that um, Germanic, Bavarian, Flemish look to it. 
and you'll see that throughout this uh, this video as we as we go through the photographs. Uh, yet another brewery, the Schlitz Brewery, and then you can see where the stereotype comes from. Um, an explanation for you know a lot of these old structures, which I submit were not built. Um, as breweries, but in fact were inherited from a previous civilization and repurposed. And uh, as you look at the skyline of these uh, of these places, you see so many of these dome spire type structures piercing the skyline. Um, when you get into the old world research. Um, we recognize that uh, there's uh, a whole different energy system that this um, civilization once existed on um, and that had to do with harnessing the ether of the atmosphere and channeling it through the buildings um, and I think that's what we're looking at with so many of these structures and it's also a reason why they have um, chopped off the heads of many of these buildings if you will. This would be the Schlitz again, let's see, one, two, three, so enormous structures, a lot of brickwork, no real allowance for manpower or time to build a lot of these structures, they just sort of pop up. And let's take a quick look at the geography of the uh, region. So Milwaukee, uh, Wisconsin sitting on the banks of Lake Michigan, the Great Lakes, not, not far from Chicago and really um, all of this is sprawling metropolis, no question these days. Uh, but let's look at some older maps. And we do have a lot of historical inconsistencies um, with a lot of these maps. Like here we're looking at that region but it really looking very broken up. Um, and you could attribute it to inaccuracy on the map makers part but uh, is that really the case? Here we have Chilaga which a lot of people have uh, suggested is the city of Chicago. Um, old world name for the city of Chicago. We have Norm Vega here as well. No, not really sure um, what, what maybe New York corresponding with New York. Not sure though. Just a hypothesis, of course. Let's check out a few more of these. Here we have a map from they're saying 1597. Uh, again, we're not seeing the Great Lakes um, as they exist today on this map. And again, are you are we to attribute that to inaccuracy of mapping? Or did the landscape look much different and did we have some sort of um, immense cataclysm that creates the uh, geography that we have today? And I did do a video on the Great Lakes um, if you're interested in that uh, storyline. It's worth a look. And in a brief nutshell the suggestion there is that what we uh, experienced was a massive cataclysm ending the previous civilization sometime in the last 500 years uh, hypothetically, don't know for sure. Um, and then what we have a, let's say a nefarious group um, moving through um, forces such as the Vatican, the Jesuits, the Crown, the fur trading companies, moving throughout the realm, eliminating the remnants of the old world, uh, the people and the buildings and then rewriting the history of the areas. So it's not such a stretch I think if, if we really uh, peer into it a little bit. And of course if that were the case and you would have to uh, re-educate the people, you'd have to eliminate much of the people, you'd have, find, have to find ways of sedating the people and give them an entire different reality um, than the previous one. Any trace of the previous uh, civilization would have to have been wiped out. And then we're not done with the breweries. This would be the Pete Best and Company Brewery, 1880 now. 1880, just over 100,000 people supposedly existing in Milwaukee. Um, if you use your sensibilities and look at this, you can actually tell that what we're looking at is something that's much, much older than the uh, short time frame that we're given for the development of Milwaukee. You can see it here in the ancient stonework, and you can see it here in the buildings as well supposedly from 1880 the photograph and how old is this building as it stands for that time period it has to go back a hundred years not looking fresh new in any way whatsoever exposition building totally destroyed by fire of course 
railway exchange building, very tall, multi-storied structure, very decorative, um, decor ornately decorated, I would say, um, in the upper region of this. We have a Masonic building here. And, and why would you really need to build a building like this to uh, house a telephone company, right? We're looking at repurposing of structures that existed. Another massive industrial um, complex, the Alice Chalmers, not exactly sure um, what industry that is, but it's just really, really immense. You can see the trains coming out of there. So if you look into the old world research, um, Anything steam powered, I think, uh, was a repurposing of an old technology uh, where we use uh, coal or whatever it is to generate steam. Um, I think they used another energy source to generate steam, but they had all of this infrastructure um, in the previous civilization. And we just found a way to repurpose it until we could get onto um, the uh, petroleum and all the fuel sources that come along with that and of course the robber baron figures that played such a large role in converting us over to those technologies enslaving us and i think we have um, a lot of polish immigration in milwaukee the wikipedia page telling us by 1915 there were a hundred thousand uh, people of polish descent in Milwaukee. And you have to ask yourself too, why, why did the, all these buildings have to be built like castles? Um, if you're trying to explain it away using the conventional historical narrative that we have been um, given for history, uh, there really is no other explanation rather than because they appreciated uh, the aesthetics of these uh, structures and had apparently the time and the resources to build them all over the place. This would be the Northwestern Railroad um, Depot. Like I mentioned, the all the railroads and lines either dug out after the cataclysm, um, dusted off, and uh, repurposed. So that whole historical narrative with uh, um, the railways reaching across the continent and all these types of things, I think that was a, a renovation operation not so much a uh, f building it from scratch. You know, a frequently asked question in this field of research has to do with uh, uh, the Native American, the Native populations of these regions, and um, how do you explain that? Because the official line goes that they were uh, existing in these areas before any of these structures existed, of course, uh, and what happened was these um, nefarious agents and certainly are the official line um, um, in modern day is definitely qualifying them as nefarious and rightly so I would suggest. Um, what came in uh, there was a genocide of a population, uh, a relocation in many uh, situations of the population and uh, when you combine those two together you, you disconnect the people from from their history just like they've done to to everybody and uh, a new uh, historical narrative has been uh, implanted and I think that it's no different for anyone no matter where you go across the realm. So that's my hypothesis and suggestion there is we can't really rely on anything um, as far as history tells us and what we may be looking at is, uh, is uh, the remains of, of the cataclysm, the people that remained after the cataclysm. You get into the stories like the uh, Hopi Navajo stories of the going underground in, in a great cataclysm. Uh, those stories repeat themselves um, throughout the realm. Uh, I would direct you again to Jared Booster's channel. He did a video on Milwaukee where he gets into the this region and, and the story um, surrounding that. All right, this is the interior of Saint Jehoshaphat's. I'll show you the exterior first bit of a grainy photograph. Um, this one is a really a dead giveaway that there's much more to the story than we've been told. And the narrative of this having to do with uh, late 1800s, the need for a basilica 
for the Polish Catholic community. Um, and this is what they were able to construct. Um, the story is wrapped around the demolition of the second post office in Chicago, or federal building, and then the repurposing of the materials, the purchasing of the materials to create this structure and the building of this magnificent structure by the parishioners at the time. So if you look at a structure like this and think that this, this can be done by unskilled hands, um, I don't know what to tell you. You'll probably believe anything. Here is a supposed evidence of, uh, of the construction going on. Uh, you can see when you zoom into these photographs as we get a little closer, um, how grainy it looks around here. These are supposed to be figures, people standing on the roof. This is a doctored photograph meant to trick us, like so many. And this would be the interior of that structure. So they give us a five-year timeline, 1896 to 1901, when all of this was supposedly have been constructed for us. But if you do the research into the cymatics of the old world buildings, you recognize the architecture for what it is. You see the octagonal um, rosettes, all having to, and then the columns with their capitals, all having to do with harnessing the ether, um, the old world technology that has been obscured from our history and our vision. St. Jehoshaphat's magnificent structure. So where can this research lead us, really? Uh, what's the point of it? I've heard people say. Well, to me the implication is uh, we live in a world um, where we are very much divided we, um, based on our history, uh, that, or the history we have been given. Um, we are embroiled in division across all sorts of lines. So as we dig into this type of research, I think uh, the we can dissolve those dividing lines when we recognize okay we we were once here um, existing in a much more harmonious fashion than we are today because we I think it's pretty obvious to anyone that uh, there's something wrong with the, our, our reality right now and something doesn't fit so much of it seems to be falling apart like we have brickwork on the ceiling in here this is St. John the Evangelist Church So many of these churches um, repurposed by these uh, religious organizations throughout the realm and obscuring our vision of what their true purpose was. And there was really no shortage of extravagance. I, I'm quite certain there must have been a peak on this that's been taken down over time. Rosette windows, the pipe organs, um, having to do with uh, resonance, frequency, resonance, and uh, the harmony and healing of the old world civilization. St. Stanislaus, or St. Stan, this one. And also you can look throughout North America and recognize that these old stone brick churches looking very, very much older than we have been told they are. This would be the, the temple. Another temple, Temple Tripoli. Looking very much um, like what we would attribute to um, Middle Eastern styling. Um, each region of the realm having their own flavor of architecture. If you do enough of the research, you'll begin to recognize it. Massive structure, the county courthouse, uh, all of the column and capital work um, incorporated into this, uh, the energetics of the old world. Really, really immense structure, this one. This gives you an idea, again, of how it uh, stands, a little bit of a more modern day type of machinery, but just just the the size and weight of the building oh, overwhelming the background of this photo. And you're getting a modern day look at uh, the actual texture of the building here. Very permanent looking architecture. And well, of course what do they do? They plop, prop their symbols out there for us and they deceive us. 
and they invert everything for us. The Kudahi Towers. The postcard of the complex. Probably pronounced that wrong. So many regional dialects. And this is an entrance into those towers, just to give you an idea of uh, of what we're dealing with here. You don't see anything anywhere near this type of uh, detail in our modern day uh, because it comes from a previous civilization. And another construction photo. And if we get in a little closer to the photograph, what do we see? Hmm. To me, that looks like evidence of some sort of tampering. Do not trust the old construction photographs. They seem to pop up over time as this research gains ground as well. There seems to be more and more um, trying to explain away and discredit this field of research, but it's not going to work. There's just too much for us to dig into, and too many of us looking now, I think. Yet another club. You can even look how, how ornate all this is here. How much work had, would have to go into all of that repurposing of the old world. So many of these old gentlemen's clubs um, um, uh, such, play such a large role in the uh, deception of the past and the, the transforming the old world into the new world. Here we have a boot and shoe company, F. Meyer, Mayer. But again, you can see the architecture, and this is this portion here still stands. There it is today, and that should give you a sense of um, texture again and uh, enormity that it's sometimes difficult to to see in a drawing like this. And actually, you can see here, looking very flat, um, but modern day we have um, we have the street working its way upward and a bit of what we call a mud flood look. So post-cataclysm repurposing of a massive old world complex. The old gas and light building. Art Deco styling. All of this repurposing going right up into post-World War II, I think. Um, our past has really been obscured much more um, than we would like to admit, I think, even in this research. There's so much, uh, so much to uncover. Now here we have the Pabst building. Um, no longer stands, but I think it's quite obvious what we're looking at here. It's an old world structure. Uh, you can also see the dome with the columns on top. So a large part of the old world, uh, I think, had to do with um, air travel and what we would call blimps or balloons or dirigibles were um, the conventional method of air travel in the old world, of course, when the Hindenburg went down. So did that method of travel, um, used only really as a novelty these days. But uh, World War One, or what we're told happened in World War One, really had was the death of the, that mode of transportation and introduction of the um, of the airplanes as we know them. And it's very difficult to trust any of the narratives of the World Wars and anything that has gone on in the past. So much has been obscured, uh, and Hollywood, of course, playing that major role um, in distorting our true past and implanting a false history for us through their their narratives and their storylines and their TV series. All of it serving to obscure our true past and who we truly are and what we can truly be, what we could truly be again. Globe Hotel. Magnificent structures. Very difficult to build anything like this. All of the features that they possess, um, really over the top, the curved corners, um, 
the dome cupola on top, the bay bay window type area here, all of these things um, well over the top of uh, practicality. This, this structure here, the Hotel Gilpatrick. No shortage of hotels as well. I also recognize um, the below ground level openings. You can see here we have an opening that we would walk down into. Um, not making sense as well for Milwaukee because Milwaukee supposedly um, built on marshy swampland. So why on earth would you ever want to build down into um, into the ground when you know all the, all that's going to happen is that that hole is going to fill with water and you're going to be at a constant battle to uh, extract the water from that. Also difficult to wrap your head around how why why they would need so many stories at such an early time period for these structures. Even in such a building as this, what is this? This is a hotel Fister. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, maybe seven stories. And they're going to decorate it in such a manner. Because you can, because you have a whole bunch of German and Polish people living there, and that's just how they build. And that's what we're that's what we're being conditioned to accept as the reality of the situation. But to me it's quite obvious that they did not build this at that early time period. No doubt this one attributed to the early 1900s for construction. You can see in this photograph, horse and buggy, we were right in that time frame. This thing is, looks permanently rooted to the ground, almost permanently rooted. And some shots of the interior in case you thought it was just a hollow shell of the Hotel Fister. Check out the coffered ceiling and the ornate designs. I know it's a grainy photo, but you can still you can still see the designs here. Here it is from another angle, and you can also see the um, architecture in the surrounding buildings, and you can also see evidence of the mud flood all around it. And lower windows going down into the ground. The Hotel Fister. Of course, I'm not telling you what to believe. A lot of people get uncomfortable when uh, their sensibilities are offended in such a manner. Uh, but this explanation of the past is not sensible whatsoever. I would suggest that we need to entertain other possibilities. So that's what we do here on this channel, and I do appreciate you joining me. If you enjoy this, uh, please hit the sub, like, all the rest of that. This would be the Plankenton House. getting a sense for how overdone this is, especially for this time period. You have the streetcars and the horse buggies. Yeah. Beautiful old world um, city, Milwaukee. And I, do, I suspect that we're attaining some of the old world name there with Milwaukee. Of course, this, this is the Hotel Randolph we just saw being torn down in 1985. Republican Hotel, giving you a sense of the old world. Hotel Schroeder, look how large this structure is. No doubt they'll tell us this was built in the 20s, but we won't really have much evidence for that. And if we do have evidence for it, the quality of the photograph will be somewhere between a drawing uh, and a legitimate photograph. But you think by the 20s that we would have uh, much more evidence. You think that a lot of these builds would have been documented, been documented extensively in some situations, but that just is not the case. And we have a, a cluster of insurance buildings, um, looking a lot like banks. Of course, the whole financial aspect of the uh, hijacking of the realm uh, intertwined with the. Uh, the inheriting of these structures. A lot of them looking like uh, parts of a uh, motherboard for a computer, circuit board, circuit board earth. Michelle Gibson's theory again I bring up a lot in a lot of my videos. Check out Michelle Gibson's channel if you want to learn more about that. And 
it's a real it's a total castle look here and really it all just feels like all part of the same the way all the materials come together to create a st structure like this is really quite something spectacular the symmetry spectacular there's an old look at it here in modern day and here's an older photograph from way back definitely in the 1800s here probably 1870s somewhere in there so you have a very very early time period and you have doors windows going below street level here certainly not accounted for in our historical narrative now this one this one jumped in there this is an interior shot of the library um, you do have those rosette style um, in this case they're square but often octagonal um, I'll, make, I'll try to highlight that as we get through the file here to show you the exterior of this building well we're told this is the courthouse it's possible this is the federal building courthouse uh, post office it might come, come under all of those uh, those banners but this is uh, quite obviously an old world structure Chamber of Commerce and in many ways otherworldly structure this not really fitting into anything that we've been told about history even the one in the foreground here you get a sense of the detail the Chamber of Commerce this, com commerce, this thing still stands here we have a close-up look at the, uh, the detailing and architecture on this thing And you really have to ask yourself, why? Well, we know why, because this is all part of an old civilization. And here we have that magnificent city hall. Looking looking very buried, if we look at the bottom here. Looking like it probably goes deeper. Yeah, but this is really, again, something Ticking all the boxes of Old World, one of the one of the most spectacular buildings on the continent, I would suggest. That was left behind for us to look at. Uh, I think there's so much that has been um, removed. Very difficult for us to uh, get a clear picture of what it may have looked like. If you dig into all the old fires, uh, what we call the old Great Fires, I think what, what was happening there is there was a uh, devastation of the remains of post cataclysm. Um, and then a cleanup operation and a repurposing. So, so many of the old structures did not survive, and these are the ones that did. So, you have to ask yourself if these are the ones that survived, what, uh, what didn't? I really, really want to know. Here's an old courthouse, no longer stands, long gone. Horse and buggy era, sure. Fire station. How many, uh, fire stations that are built modern day have this type of look to it if you were to build a tower on a modern day fire station it would be very rectangular very basic there's no room for anything more than that this is the germania germania building you see the four domes one two three there's one behind there too and they're really these look like possibly i'm not sure owls maybe lions actually have this really grand entryway so I mean if you think all of this just sprung up in the late 1800s I really don't know what to tell you obviously you're you're not very in touch with uh, timelines and how uh, how the construction process works um, and then where to accept it according to the historical narrative that they didn't have any technology um, or have the technology that we have today to build these structures we couldn't even do any of this today within the timelines that were given for so many of these structures and of course we're in for so many of these we're not even given a timeline we're just told that this is when it began this is when it was founded this is when it opened this is the library I showed you an interior shot earlier on in the video this is the exterior of the library and museum you have that classic old world look of columns above street level why on earth would you build that way? Here's the Mitchell building sitting next to the Chamber of Commerce. You can just see the Chamber of Commerce around the corner there. 
Mitchell building. Really, really, really amazing. Amazing detail. Beautiful building. Beautiful building. Milwaukee, get out and check these out if you're in the area. Yeah, there's so much to see. So much still exists. They're relying on us not looking or, or understanding of what we're looking at at this point in time and discrediting those that do look at it. So, Plankinton Mansion. Let's look at some interior shots. Uh, then we get a sense of the ornate woodwork. Not a square inch overlooked. If you've ever done this type of finish work, you will appreciate this for the beauty that it is and for the intricacy and difficulty that, that, that it is. And despite, despite the, uh, the detail, uh, also feeling almost plain compared to some of the uh, finishing we see in many of these old world structures. And there you have the fireplace. Uh, hypothesized not used for, uh, within the old world research, that it's not used for fires, but actually part of the um, harnessing of the ether. exterior shots. This really giving you a sense of the age as we look at how this is all finished. All the block work and brick work. Old, looking very old. Another good look at some of the artwork up above. Also very polished looking, probably granite mini column here, short column. And of course they had to do away with it. So we tore that thing down. This is the Plankington House, we are told, very early on in the time period. Again, uh, if we look closely, we get a real sense. Looking like the Mitchell Building and the you know, Chamber of Commerce and um, all of that architecture repeating itself. Even on the, in the foreground here, you can see on this building, the tech and the detailing, the spirals. Here we have an interior shot of the Plankenton house we just looked at. With a, what, an atrium with a, uh, a skylight type opening. Although it's not a great photograph, you can still marvel at the level of detail in these old world buildings. I saw this one as a, as a postcard earlier on. Uh, this photograph, we can get in a little closer and you can get a sense for the detail. The old road depot. I may have that. Might be another name for it as well. They tore this down in 1965. Um, railroad depot. Yeah. Why would you tear that down? The Wells building. Again, sharing all of the features, even the portholes at the top. And then the question comes up a lot too, why detail at the tops? Nobody's, everyone's down here walking around, built at a time where there was supposedly not much for air travel. Why spend so much of your energy um, detailing the tops of the buildings? More than aesthetics, no question. There's the train station again, they had to tear down in the 60s. Nice skyline shot for you. And from 1900, again, this is illustrating that early time period. Um, these supposedly f relatively new, having gone up within the previous 10 years of this photograph, 1900, uh, certainly not looking like they're fresh to that skyline. Another old shot of the old city hall. And another club, the Deutscher Club. So this would be that uh, German Bavarian type of influence that we're told uh, sparked a lot of the construction in the area. When in fact, I think what we're looking at is is uh, an old world city where this architecture was intact for much longer than we've been told. The Germania building again there, you see the domes, 
Uh, I like this postcard, it's interesting, it's giving you different modes of transportation, uh, including the little uh, air travel home, home style version of a dirigible, which were fairly common at the old fairs at the turn of the century. Alright, let's move fairly quickly. There's still, still a few photos to show you in this collection. Um, and I want to uh, I want to include everything in there. It's just so the visuals are out there for, for viewers to check out. Milwaukee County Hospital for Insane. It sure is insane. No wonder. No wonder there were so many crazy people that needed to be locked up in these asylums. Because the world around them must have seemed insane, especially with the... Uh, the story that they've been given, an explanation for these things. Imagine telling somebody that this was built a year previous, and as they're walking by they can tell that it's much, much older. You'd be in a state of disbelief, I would think. This is a fantastic high quality photograph. Let's zoom in a little bit on this area here. You can see um, definite evidence of mud flooding. You'd never build that way with the intention of having a small window here and then creeping up larger and larger. And then you're going down into the lower levels there. The streetcars and all of that infrastructure all part of the old world and uh, looking very well um, intact and a part of Milwaukee life. You can also tell that the streets are uh, brick paved and that's another indication that we're looking at old world. This is interesting, some sort of dragon on the front of the Pabst building on the corner. Gargoyle type. Why, why do you have to put gargoyles and everything? Really? Eye candy, I call this stuff. Look at this. The spire going right up. Energy from the ether coming down through the ball, supposedly mercury in the balls um, coming down through. Um, the antenna into the building structure itself and being harnessed with a lot of the column type architecture. Yeah, definitely worth pausing on this one. And of course the mooring dock for the airships where you would moor the nose of the airship on here and then the stairs would come down and you could walk right down into the top of the building. There are photographs of the, that existing we saw this complex previously, the Plankinton House. Amazing. And this would be that post office again, but another, another nice crisp photograph for you to really take in the scene. <laughs> this looking like uh, New World construction right here, a little kiosk on the corner. And this looking like Old World construction. We have a sanitarium complex under the banner of the Catholic Church, Sacred Heart. Here are the front of that safety building, just to give you an idea of the detailing that exists on these structures and around the doors. Oh, this one's interesting too. The Schlitz Palm Garden. You can't quite make it out, but you can see the detailing here. And then, of course, this cove style cornice. And here we have a look at the interior. Uh, Semicircular roof with the skylight, all from the 1800s. You, you're going to have to give me a break here, folks, if you really think that all of this stuff was uh, being cobbled together before the age of power tools because of some brilliant architects. You're going to have to give me a break. All right, we have a collection of schools. I like this one. Uh, don't have any 12th Street, apparently. Um, you have the spiral staircase. Must be a fire escape, maybe? Maybe it's uh, maybe it's not a staircase. Maybe it's a fire escape. I can't tell. Although I think there are steps in there. That's interesting, and that's a unique feature I haven't seen in many other areas. All right. Let's go through a collection of high schools. If you attended any of these high schools, please throw it in the comments interested to hear your stories attached to these. This is the Downer College, looking like some sort of observatory possibly up here. I've seen that in other uh, educational institutes as well. Uh, 
an early time frame to 1907 postcard. These look like old structures. The Female College, 1861, very early on in the time period. I know it's a rendering, but you still get the point. Marquette University, I think we're going to see this one, modern day. No, it's not a cathedral in France. This is Marquette University, Milwaukee. Looks like a mud flooded normal school. The foreground looking like some sort of wave of mud and then a little bit of vegetation and a building that was standing before that wave came through. Yet another normal school. It's not the same one, is it? Don't think so. Park Street School, 1927 photograph. There again you have that. Fire escape or stairs? What do you think? Throw it in the comments. Maybe you're familiar with it. Maybe you've seen it, so please throw it in. I, I haven't seen that before. Southside High School had to have a dome, of course, because it's a repurposed old world building, and this was the way that they harnessed power for these structures. Heating, cooling, lights, whatever you need, all a part of the old world power structure. Replaced, of course, by a nefarious power structure by the robber barons and entities similar. All right, coming to the end of the file, I'm going to try and wrap it up here. I know it's a long video, but Milwaukee, I think I had to do it justice by getting as much of uh, the visuals in there as I possibly could. I knew it would be a long one. I just want you to see what I found on the region and what I consider to be evidence of the old world civilization that once existed and what, what was left of it is just the remains and the repurposing. Let me see that one again. Washington High School. Yet another school, don't have a name for it. Really no shortage. I wonder if these are those uh, spirals, but they're encased in this situation, or enclosed. The soldier's home, that's where you had to put the Civil War soldiers after the war, traumatized. There as it stands today, I'll give you an idea of the building materials. This really looking like roofs I've seen in places like Prague and Budapest, the patterning on the roof very unique and very difficult to duplicate. Very expensive that would be to propose such a thing in the modern day. The Bijou Theater. Smacks of Old World. Uh, the Papst Theater. And the Schubert Theater. Okay, you can see the mud flood evidence there. Let's look at some interiors. This is the Schubert Theater. And we have the water tower. Old grainy photograph from 1860s, 1870s, I would suggest. And then that's what it looks like in the modern day. So I think we're going to leave it there. Um, this has been pretty much everything I could find on Milwaukee. I hope you enjoyed my musings as we went through the visuals, and I thank you for joining me.